In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at an all new charger from ISDT. This one is slightly different and this one could be one of, could have been, I think, in my opinion, one of the best chargers out in the market or portable chargers out in the market due to a couple of things. And I wish they would have done some modifications as well to something of this nature. So hopefully maybe the P40 would do this. So first of all, it is a portable charger that takes only DC input and it takes, I think they're called XT90s. So here's the typical XT60 and I think this is the XT90. I think that's what they're called. You can see that they're slightly bigger because they could handle more uh, current. And the reason why it's using such a larger connector here is because one port is able to output 1000 watts. However, when you combine both of them, the maximum output would be 1,500 watts. So it would be 750 watts and 750 watts maximum. They could charge up to an 8S, as you can tell. There's no need for those balancing boards or anything. And this is kind of meant to be a parallel charger and at the same time charge some pretty decently sized batteries. But it does fall short in a couple things, in my opinion. Although they're not deal breakers for most, but I wish I would have seen some of the features that I'm going to discuss today. So it takes up to 34 volt input. We have a maximum input current of 60 amps and it can do charging current 0.2 all the way up to 30 times 2. And you can see single mode is 100 watts and uh, 1,500 watts if you use both of them. So 750, 750. So basically, theoretically, you can do 1,000 watts on one, 500 on another one, and you should be able to get the full thing. Now, this is not plastic. This is all metal right here. The only plastic is up top with the case right here. And this is a test unit here. This was sent to me by ICT. As you can tell, it is scratched, but we're just going to let that go here. So let's power this guy on here. Hopefully we do this right. We don't burn it. Now, one thing I noticed is it didn't seem to have a power supply mode, a digital power supply mode. So we're going to double check that right now together. It does have some Bluetooth functionalities, but my main charger has that and I never, ever use it. So it might be different for most here. And once we plug it in, you see we have both channels here. So if you wanted to modify channel one, you would click here and start doing your modifications. If you wanted to modify channel two, then you're going to click here and it'll let you know what channel you're on right there. So let's quickly go over the menu and see if it has any interesting features here. So obviously we're going to have charge, discharge, storage and destroy. Destroy kills your battery. Be careful when doing that. So under charge, the chemistry that we have is high volt, lithium uh, polymer, lithium ion, life, PB, nickel metal hydride. PB is a lead acid, kind of like a car's battery here. So that's really nice to know that you have here. It's going to charge all the way up to an 8S. And here we should see uh, around, oh, these are some presets. Oh, that's really nice. 25 amps. And we could just hold it. Very responsive, by the way. Very responsive, by the way. However, something to take note with ISD chargers, ISDT chargers, is the fact that their screens are very, very vulnerable to scratches. And they get damaged pretty quickly. Uh, most of them do ship with screen protectors. This one did as well, but it wasn't on. I wish it was on. But again, this is a test unit. That's why it's scratched. So core voltage, you could change this offset here, the end voltage basically for whatever you want. Like if you're charging, this would be the end voltage of your charge. Um, so if you found it that it was, you know, charging uh, less by one volt, you could go ahead and fix that here. Not one volts too much, but let's just say 0.1 of a volt. You can go in here and change that to like 4.21. Then you should get your voltage. So yeah, you can do that as well. For every single uh, option, you can do that. And that is to be expected with every single charger in the market currently. But what I'm trying to do is find the Bluetooth section because I cannot figure out how to get into that menu at all. Anyways, we'll come back to the Bluetooth section in a bit here. Let's take a look at some of the things they do provide. They give you a 5 volt, 2 amp charger. This is just a basic USB 2.0. It's nothing, no quick charging, no nothing. We have USB-C, but as far as I can tell, this is just an input to flash the device. If you needed to upgrade it here, you can see the PC sign up here. Uh, for the input, obviously, it's just a DC input. You can't put a, you, it's not an AC input, so you're going to have to uh, maybe come up with a power adapter brick in order to get it to go in here if you wanted to do some AC stuff. But this is meant to be on the go. Now, a couple things that would have liked to see differently here was um, a possible extra XT60 input on the side right there. That would have been really great. Also give you a proper, you know, a, at least an adapter from XT90 to XT60 or also from XT90 to alligator clips like this in order for you to put it on your car's, uh, your car's battery, for example, if you're going to be charging out in the field. So these types of things I wish I would have seen. And this is what I would do if I was doing my own charger. And not only that, I would also implement an XT30 connector right here. And you know, 1S is also like a 1S connector, but that's, I think that's a bit too much. It's pushing it right there. 
but at least an XT30. And I think this thing would have sold absolutely phenomenal. So yeah, an XT30 and XT60, that, that would have been really, really great. Also, some sort of connectors and adapters would have been really nice as well. I don't know why nobody's doing that. Or at least an adapter from XT60 to an XT30 and also XT90 and XT60. I think that would have been really great because it is a pretty expensive, expensive charger here. So if you also wanted to convert this into some sort of an AC input, there are two adapters that currently work for this. I'll have them linked down below. I just found them all searching. Um, one of them is like 270 bucks and then the other one is $44, but I wouldn't trust a $44 one to be honest. Plus that seems like it to be an XC60, but the proper one is the ISDT SP3060, which is, uh, which is pretty insane. It's a 1800 watt power supply, uh, AC power supply for something of this nature, which again, I'll have linked down below if you want to go ahead and check that out. So overall, it seems pretty nice. I haven't had much time to use it and um, it's a bit too bulky for my use case and I believe a lot of other people's use case unless you're going for like a really hardcore um, day out. But, you know, uh, that's up to you. And then unless you're, you know, charging some 8S batteries or X-Class maybe, maybe this is the type of thing for you. But I think X-Class uses more than uh, 8S. I think they use like 12S and 10S. So if you're looking for a pretty beefy charger to parallel charge your 6S boards or or some large capacity batteries, then uh, this might be your best friend right here. I think this is one of the most powerful portable chargers out there currently, uh, which is really nice to have. But again, I wish they, you know, they looked into the accessories and they gave a bit more for you to work with uh, out of the box. That That's what I would have loved to see here, ISDT. I mean, you've been doing this for quite some time. I mean, we should at least some see you throw some nice stuff in there every once in a while, um, but yeah. And, well, that's really it. I can't say anything else about it. I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. And everything's linked down below. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.